Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri, Minkum. And always a reminder for myself and our dhikr ajeez and ta'eef, oh miskeen, oh zalim, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And with all the might and majesty of Ramadan and all his tajallis and blessings, Alhamdulillah that Allah inshaAllah complete His favours upon our souls and dress us from the reality of the heavenly malakut and the dress from the dunya that Allah to annihilate the nafs and to bring down all the bad characters so that this journey towards the Divine the Presence and the reality of the Divine the Presence to dress upon our, our being inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life in which to see these days and nights inshaAllah. It's an interactive Thursday, do we have anything, no, no activity from online? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, the po po post Ramadan uh, energy. Everybody's uh, in a spiritual exhaustion. All the practices of, of Ramadan that uh, is all hyped up, all the energy, all the madad and the support that Allah is sending. And then Alhamdulillah Shawwal comes and a lot of people feel that they are missing that energy and don't feel that tajalli because the state of fasting is not upon and the nafs takes over and all the tajallis that come after. And all the, the bad characteristics of the shaitans that are released, not even on the twelfth hour, the minute that the Ramadan tajalli was ending you could see the world was uh, throwing its bombs and destructions and people yelling, screaming, fighting because their shaitans coming out. And 30 days of burning the nafs and those who entered into the fasting and dressed by the reality of the fasting, 30 days of that tajalli and that blessing, that nafs comes out with a vengeance that it teams up with the shayateens and, and many people then begin to sort of like wound up, begin to yell, scream, get angry and that's the reality of the tariqah. Some reason the shaykh can keep talking about it but people think it's like a philosophy and in the midst of their fights and battles they forget that uh, all their teaching. And no matter what condition Allah puts us in that whatever event happens that people strike a nerve and want to become angry, Allah is looking to the khuluq and the character. The subject is completely irrelevant. He said, she said, what was said, nothing of what was said is important but how one reacts is everything. Means if the, if the character changes, the language changes, the demeanor changes then that test was not successful. And no matter what it is because some nerves go deeper, you know when the doctor wants to test, he hit one thing and you don't react then Allah wants to go deeper into the character and hit something else and the person explodes with their anger, explodes with all their characteristics. And this is what Allah wants for the students is, are you seeing how you react to the situation? So the subject never matters. He said, she said is not important but what did you do with it and how did you react with it is everything. And that's where the tariqah is testing and the tariqah comes to perfect character. So when somebody emails, I think I'm going to… I don't think I need the tariqah. Well, I, you know it, it's not about a… 
repeating the tariqa, it's about your… your what you're really saying from your inner being is, I don't need good manners because you're not getting it from these teachings on these channels. You're definitely not getting it from the masjid where the imams are not responsible for teaching good manners and you're not going to get it from one Friday khutbah for the whole week. And then you go from one khutbah to one khutbah because most people their Islam is just their Jummah. There's no halakas and teachings, there's the, no, no guidance and it's self-serve. There's a big difference between ihtiba and wajib taqlid that ihtiba and, and wajib means it's mandatory to follow. And that's why Allah says, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, all al amri minkum, obey. So how can you obey if you're not following someone? So in life Allah wants for us to follow an ulul am, follow one whom is following Sayyidina Muhammad but by their deeds and their actions, not just by the fancy words. That their deed and their action is following the way of Sayyidina Muhammad is wajib, it's, a, it's our Islam. You, you can't practice Islam outside of that, especially Ahlul Sunnah. They don't believe in Bab al Ishtihad, the gates of making fatwas are open, that's a Wahhabi madhab that anybody can make a fatwa but they believe in taqlid that you have to follow and you have to follow an ulul amr and the ulul amr are those whom their deeds and their actions are understood means they're not just saying something they're doing it and they are Muhammadiyoon that they follow the love and propagate the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's all these teachings. Said that if they love Sayyidina Muhammad they begin to take on the characteristics. And this characteristic that Allah wants is the akhlaq and the character. That if they don't have Muhammadiyun character they can have all the knowledge in the world. They can claim whatever titles they want in the world. They can claim to be the highest spiritual pole. They can claim that they are Sahib al Imdad, which is a ridiculously crazy statement for anyone to say that. That they are the Sahib and the owner of all the madad and support that reaching to this earth. You have to be bold to, to even think like that. That shows the level of sickness within somebody to talk like that. So these are bizarre characteristics. What Allah look to is humility, is the path is based on humility. That to be nothing, to have the best of character, one whom does not encourage backbiting, one whom does not encourage fighting and espionage and running from here to here to, to spread gossip, to spread rumors, to, to steal from people, to enter into communities that are unwanted. These are not the characteristics of, of holy people. These are not the characteristics of those whom have the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that is the great deceit and the great danger that faces the community. So it's good character by their actions and their word, that they teach the word and they live by it. They teach the, the blessings of Sayyidina Muhammad the khuluq, the character because Allah it's all about Allah that Allah what He wanted of the perfection for humanity and that perfection is in Sayyidina Muhammad So then the shaykhs must be focusing on the, the Prophet's character, this is how he talked, this was his gentleness, this is when faced with difficulty, when faced with communities. His people were encouraged to be loving and know their boundary and their limits. When you come across a people that they don't know their boundary 
and they definitely don't know their limits and you definitely see within their character all bad characteristics. That's the, that's the thing to be looking for in our life. That was the example that to look for the good characteristics and the schools and the teacher that teaches good characteristics. If you find a teacher like that then it's not a matter of I want to follow tariqah, not follow tariqah, change the words. Say, I want to follow good manners or I, I don't want to follow good manners. The word is fooling you, the vocabulary is fooling people. I want to do this, I want to do that. This is a school of good manners. Whom comes is wanting to have the perfected character and to have the Muhammadiyun characteristics of love, muhabbat and they teach this battle from shaitan. How the art of, of this battle is to be won, means that when confronted with a difficulty how do you react? How do you communicate? What is your khuluq and your character in the face of these difficulties? Not, not just throw titles and ridiculous things by children that uh, repeating titles that they don't know their own names more or less talking about the title of somebody else. If you don't know your own name, what are your seven names in life? Means people who want to throw out titles and all sorts of ridiculous statements. This path is based on who knows himself will know his Lord. So before you can talk about even your Lord be it Allah Sayyidina Muhammad or shaykh is you have to know yourself. How can you talk about the greatness of anyone when you don't know yourself? That's why then the process was, was tafakkur and muraqabah that they, they came into the schools of tafakkur so that the shaykhs would teach them about themselves. When you begin to take a path of knowing yourself, what are your demons, what are your characteristics, what are your angers, what are, what are your liabilities within yourself that are dangerous characteristics, those are the ones that you confront. So busy yourself with yourself. When the servant took the correct path and they busied themselves with themselves, not busy themselves but deal with other people, busy themselves, talk about other people. They busied themselves to know themselves. When they began to see their demons, their characteristics then the shaykh inspired for them their zikrs, their practices, what to focus on, how to balance yourself, don't, don't self-diagnose yourself on what you want to do and where you want to go and how you want to treat it. But you're in an ocean of taslim that this is the, the feeling I'm having, these are the characteristics I'm having and the shaykhs then teach you how to control those characteristics, what to recite for these characteristics, how to come across and come against these bad characteristics. Until you're at a place in which the bad characteristics are brought down and then you are presented with that which is of a ruhani nature within yourself. Means you begin to understand the inner realities of the self and begin to know who you are. So you begin to know your seven names. The name that is the outermost region of what this world knows you. Your next level into your paradise name, your next level into your paradise name, each of these seven names you have to know them, you have to know them. Not only the name but you have to with your tawajjul and with your spirituality you have to have met them and understood and learned from them the purpose of what they serve. Why Allah created them? How are they supposed to support you on your mission to Rabbiul A'la and onto your highest name which is in the Divinely Presence. And that name that receives all the fires is from Allah's Divinely Presence and dresses down these realities to those seven names and these seven names are serving that servant. Until they know those realities of their names how could they talk about other people? 
how could they talk about who's this and who's that? You don't know yourself. So the tariqah was based on, be humble, be nothing, take a path in which to learn who you are. Once you get to know who you are, you know your presence in the presence of the shaykhs. You know who your name is in their presence, you know your presence in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi you know your presence in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and you know your presence in the presence of Allah Means this uh, tariqah is real, its teachings are real. But unfortunately a lot of crazy children running around left and right and become like a mockery. And they say whatever they want, they're all over the place making videos. But the tariqah is based on knowing oneself, perfecting oneself and reaching towards these perfections that Allah has given. And as soon as you listen to the teachings, the teachings are real, immediately you'll be getting into a fight, angry, yelling, screaming and only Allah are observing. That how are you responding, how are you acting, did you keep your wudu, did you make your salawats, did you try to control the anger and the bad characteristics. All of these just to get to know yourself, if you're not able to conquer the outer demon there's no way to get into the inner demon and the inner realities and to get in towards the inner heavenly presence. It makes common sense that if you can't shake the demons off of you, how are you going to Rabbi al-A'la? How are you going into Divinely Presence with all these shaitans? So all of these demons at the gate they have to be subdued, they have to be brought down. It's the importance of the characteristics so no doubt as soon as Ramadan's about to end you should have been prepared that many difficulties will be coming towards you because now you have all these blessings and dressings and these shaitans are standing on the side waiting for you to come back out. They come back out and join us and now we want to take away all the gifts that Allah has given to you and this is a, a real battle. This is not psychology, Sufism is not a psychology course where we're talking philosophies and you know maybe then you can email and debate me and your philosophy and my philosophy, no, this is ridiculous, this is a reality. This has nothing to do with philosophy, this has to do with an immense reality that the shaykhs witness it, they live through it and they many can see it, they can see the demons that are coming out, they can see the demonic effect upon people and their characteristics and how the demon comes and the characteristic of the person is changing. So we pray that Allah make it to be real for everyone, that they have a sense that this is real, the shaykh is, is talking about something real. That video that came out on Sunday night, I think Adam released it late, it was supposed to come Sunday, came Sunday early like 3 in the morning Pakistan time. But that video that came out was talked about maybe 6-7 months ago. And it was produced based on they pulled the inventory of videos, it came out and it was exactly for its timing. So we said before that how this process works is very miraculous. The talks are months apart and they pull out the talk, they put on all of the, the graphics and they submit that a month before anything happened. Sometimes four weeks, five, six weeks before anything happened. Don't think that they saw something on the news and two days later it went on to British television and Canadian television. These are episodes that were produced six months ago and put on to these broadcast stations four months ago or four weeks ago and events come and then the video is there to play it. So these are our big isharats and, and guidance and signs from Allah from Sayyidina Muhammad that are showing people that the events that are taking place, what type of guidance are coming for them and what type of warnings are coming for the earth from just a simple YouTube channel. That, that video talked about all of these difficulties, all of these regions that will be in, on fire and in difficulty and corruption and for the people of those areas to go home, go home before it's too late and you have no home to go to. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us, give us good characteristics, let us to pass these tests so that we can get to the next level inshaAllah 
and pass those tests and get to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.